reading the scripture this morning from John chapter 21 verses 15 to 19 and I read it says when they had eaten Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of John do you love me more than these others do with reasoning intentional spiritual devotion as one loves the father he said to him yes Lord you know that I love you I have deep instinctive personal affection for you as for a close friend he said to him feed my lambs again he said to him the second time Simon son of John do you love me with reasoning intentional spirit, spiritual devotion as one loves the father he said to him yes Lord you know that I love you I have a deep instinctive personal affection for you as for a close friend he said to him shepherd my sheep and he said to him the third time Simon son of John do you love me with a deep instinctive personal affection for me as for a close friend Peter was grieved, saddened, hurt. They should ask him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, when you were young, you guided yourself, put on your own belt or ghetto, and you walked about wherever you please to to go but when you grow old you will set out your hands and someone else will put a girdle around you and carry you where you do not wish to go he said this to indicate what type kind of debts Peter will glorify God and after this he said to him follow me but Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following the one who also had leaned back on his breast at the supper and I said Lord who is it that is going to betray you when Peter saw him he said to Jesus Lord what about this man the Lord bless the reading of his word 
Yes, this passage is poignant with regards to Peter. The man who always asks this question or that question, and through whom or through whose question Jesus taught many lessons. This was a man who was bold enough as led by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus asked, Who do you say that I am? Others were saying, Elijah. Others were saying, Moses. Like Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Yes, Peter was a man used of God, mightily used of God. He was one who was among the three that Jesus took with him into the Garden of Gethsemane. He was the man that Jesus said, Yes, upon this revelation I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was a leader among the disciples. But this was also a man who blundered, a man who became strong in himself and prided himself that if all the disciples will disown Jesus, will disappoint Jesus, will cower and run from Jesus, he said, I am the man. I will not leave you. I will not dis disappoint you. I will not betray you. Can't mean, but unfortunately, he overestimated his strength and he blundered. For when push came to shove, he fell like a pack of cards. He denied Jesus not just once, not just twice, but three times. Yes. Top disciple, an apostolic star, had fallen from the skies when he denied him the third time, even swearing, effing, Jesus looked at him because he had predicted that they would deny him thrice before the cock crows. Yes, and at that point the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what the Lord had said. For the cock crows, you would deny me three times. And he went away sorrowful, weeping, because he had so blundered. 
He thought he would not. But he did when the crunch came. But that is our story. That is our story. We all blunder. We all are weak in ourselves. Yes, I will deny Jesus many times. When we should speak up, we are dumb. When we should speak up, we hide. That is our story. No one is strong in themselves. Yes. That is why the Word of God says, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand in the evil day. Yes. Unless we are strong in Him, unless we depend on Him at all times, we will be vulnerable. We will be meat for the enemy because we will fail and fail woefully. We will blunder beyond belief. Yes, so Peter failed. This was a man who walked on water and began to drown when he took his eyes off Jesus. Yes, he did incredible. The only one of the disciples who walked on water. Yes. He denied Jesus three times. I don't know the man. Who are you talking about? I don't know him from Adam. I don't. I am not one of these. Yes. So I deny Jesus. Hallelujah. And he thought it was all over. I'm going fishing. Was what he said after Jesus had died. Yes. It was, he thought ministry was over. I've denied him. Yes, when it mattered most, I crumbled. Now it's over. I'm going fishing. We go back to my old lifestyle. Jesus will never accept me. It's over for me. When Jesus rose from the dead, he told me, Mary who saw him, go tell my disciples and Peter. <laughs> he singled them out. Tell him I'm alive. Tell him he who was dead is alive. Tell him it's not over. Until it's over. It's not over. Until I say so. And later on, as we see in this passage, Jesus comes 
and he shares a meal with his disciples. Yes, Peter was there, the man who had failed him so woefully. And so Jesus begins to ask him these strange questions. Three times, do you love me? Peter replied, yes, I do love you, affectionately, intentionally, as a man who loves his friend, his close friend. The feed, my lambs, he asked him again. Peter asked, replied the same way, shepherd my sheep, and the third time, yes, and he told him again, feed, my lamb, Feed my sheep, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And you wonder, what is Jesus trying to do? The third time round, Peter was grieved, hurt. And he said, Oh Lord, you know all things. You know all things. Peter, yes, was reminded of how he had depended on himself and failed woefully. Jesus was not rubbing it in. Jesus wanted to restore Peter. He failed three times. Now Jesus was restoring him again three times with those questions that were repeated three times. Yes, Jesus does not give up on us because of our failure. So long as we will acknowledge that by ourselves we are nothing. So long as we will acknowledge that we have failed, He will restore us. He will not abandon us. And so, Peter, the one who blundered, was restored. Yes, and this restoration, this reassurance that he was still in the race, still in contention, galvanized Peter. Yes, it encouraged him. It's not over until the Lord says so. I may have blundered in times past. Yes, when it mattered most, I forsook him. I denied him. Not once, not twice, not but three times. But the Lord has not forsaken me. The Lord has restored me. The Lord still has confidence in me. He has restored me. And because of that, we see Peter 
bouncing back. Yes, coming back on the day of Pentecost. We see him among the, the disciples in the upper room where he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, and when they were taken out into the marketplace and speaking in other tongues, Peter was amongst them. And even as they were wondering what has happened to these people to be speaking in the languages that we hear them in our own language are they drunk some people thought Peter rose up ah, bold by the power of the spirit and he proclaimed yes why are you all thinking the way you are thinking we are drunk ha huh. it's just nine o'clock in the morning yes this is what was written about the Holy Spirit let's go to Acts chapter 2 yeah Peter had bounced back. Peter Simon, Acts chapter 2, verse 14, where Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, glory, and said to them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it is known unto you, hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is by the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, it shall come to pass in the last days, said God. I will pour out my spirit, out of my spirit, upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants, and on my handmaid, maidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and majestic, glorious, notable day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David, speaking concerning him, I saw the Lord always before 
my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. He is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn when I wrote to him that of the fruit of the loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heavens, but he said him, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy fools thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37 Now when he had, they, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the Apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word we are baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon all, every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common. Glory be to God. Yes, what is happening here? The man who had blundered. 
this. So irreparably as it seemed but restored by Jesus after he has resurrected and we see this man bouncing back because he had been forgiven bouncing back because he had been restored yes Let's look at his sermon. Yes. Peter, the failure, is now the victor. Bold. Rising up boldly. Lifting up his voice. Amongst the other the apostles. And preaching so powerfully. Yes, he started with the book of Joel. Chapter 2, verse 28, quoting the scriptures verbatim, powerfully applying the scriptures. Yes. From there he went to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 22. He said, Jesus, a man approved of God, among them yes by miracles and wonders and signs which God did through him they crucified however he also applied the scriptures that it was by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God that Jesus was crucified Glory be to God. That was revelation knowledge. Coming forth so powerfully. God had raised up Jesus, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. He went from there to Psalm 16:11. 16. 16. 10. Jesus could not be held down. That was a prophetic sign. You will not allow your Holy One to see decay. He applied it to Jesus. Praise God. Yes, we can see the failure, the fearful, becoming so bold. Because Jesus had restored him. Yes, where he failed woefully. He now triumphed powerfully. The man who denied Jesus so much now exalts him to the highest place taking the rostrum and glorifying Jesus. Hallelujah. Who has failed? Jesus woefully. Who has blundered? Jesus. Who has blundered in his calling? Who has fallen where he thought he was strong? Jesus is here to restore. There is now no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus set us free from the law of sin and death. Have you? disappointed Jesus? Have you failed him in your ministry, in your calling, in your destiny? Have you failed him where you thought you will never? Are you discouraged? Jesus 
is encouraging you today. No matter how you may have failed him, he's saying to you, get up and go again. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. No matter how many times you have failed him, he is restoring you so many times. Therefore, even as Peter bounced back on the day of Pentecost, you too can bounce back. You too can triumph even where you failed. Not because of your might, not because of your power, not because of your wisdom, but because of the Holy Spirit in you. Yes, receive a new dose of the Holy Spirit and go and glorify God even where you failed before. In the name of Jesus, I break every yoke of bondage, every yoke of fear and timidity. Go and glorify God where you failed Him before because of the Spirit of God and if the Spirit of He who raised Christ from the dead indwells you. He that raised Christ from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. The Holy Spirit is the standby, he is the teacher, he is the comforter, he is the anointing, he is the strengthener, he is here to fill you again. Paul wrote, be not drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be being filled by the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit again and go and fulfill your ministry in the name of Jesus. Yes, the Holy Spirit is here to empower you, to strengthen you, to anoint you for service. Yes, he will make every weakness, turn every weakness into strength. The Holy Spirit is here to anoint you afresh, to empower you afresh, to reassure you afresh. Go in the power of the Spirit. And he, yes, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we are told, and ye shall receive the power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses upon unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and out of the uttermost path of the earth. Receive Power, even now. Power for service. Dunamis, dynamic power for service. Go in the strength of the Lord. Receive the Holy Spirit afresh. And go in all boldness. And do what you couldn't do before. In the name of Jesus. Go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go and teach with authority. Go and do signs and wonders just like Jesus did because of the Holy Spirit. Yes, when Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Go and do the wonders that your Master and your Savior and your Lord did in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus name he who blundered bounced back you too can bounce back in the name of Jesus wherever is holding you I break a stranglehold now in Jesus name whatever is keeping you down whatever is causing you yes to go with your head down I break a stranglehold in Jesus name yes Peter the blunderer bounce back you too can bounce back in the name of Jesus and fulfill vision you too can bounce back in the name of Jesus and fulfill your destiny you too can bounce back in the name of Jesus and accomplish your assignments in Jesus name whatever fetters that the enemy is using to hold you down I break its stranglehold now in the name of Jesus bounce back to the glory of God you are born to win you are born to overcome in Jesus name in Jesus name go in the strength of the Lord and accomplish your purpose your purpose shall not be scuppered in the name of Jesus your expectation shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus receive forgiveness for where you blundered and go with ferocity go yes with your face like a flint and finish the work that God has given you to do God is for you and no one can be against you God is for you and no one can put you down because of a past failure yes arise from slumber arise from deadness arise from decadence yes even as Peter said yes yes because hallelujah you will not allow your holy one to see decay therefore you too will not see decay in the name of Jesus you too will not see corruption you will not rot in Jesus name it is not over until Jesus says so and his word for you is that it is not over for you regardless of your past failures it's not over until it's over yes the blunderer shall bounce back to the glory of God not by might not by power but by the spirit of the living God greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world bounce back to the glory of God the word of God to you is I command you to rise from slumber I command you to rise and fulfill vision hey like Lazarus rose from the dead rise up and fulfill vision to the glory of God yes God be for you who can be against you and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purposes arise and fulfill vision even in 2012 yes great expectation shall come great expectation shall come regardless of those who are against you there are more with you than are against you therefore stand strong and see the salvation of the Lord he who blunder shall glorify God even where he failed why because of the Holy Ghost yes because of the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage arise and fulfill vision in the name of of Jesus.
God is for you and no one can be against you. Yes, Rarante Esi, Rasesh Tekorobdia. Yes, whoever is born of God overcome this world and this is the victory to overcome this world. Even your faith, the blunderer shall glorify God. Bounce back to the glory of God. Yes, forget the former things. Hallelujah. This is a new day. This is a new day because Jesus has risen from the dead. It's a new day for you. Arise and glorify God. Come to you faithful and true. And fulfill what only you can do. In Jesus' name. I come broken and dry. Oh Lord, I cry. Oh Most High. I come okay. aching, badly shaking, Thank you, bleeding, God. battered and broken. Hallelujah. You merciful God, powerful God, faithful God. I come to your holy place, your throne of grace, to seek your face. Here I come.
You're merciful, God, powerful, God, faithful, God. Do what only you can do. Come to your throne of grace, your holy place, to seek your face. In you only moving, have my being. Where else can I go? Only you are the way of eternal life. I just come, I come just as I am. Where I am, I am, I am. I just hear me, feel me, I drop in the bucket. Touch me, your lady. Your beams to you, my on the God. waters. I'm not ashamed. No, Heaven no, is your throne. The earth is your footstool.